Well, we've just seen how uh, the first trait of a community on mission uh, is a pioneering spirit. But secondly, then we see that the second trait is diversity of makeup. Uh, a community on mission is diverse. Careful reading of, of Ezra chapter 2 will, will make this clear. It is a diverse community. Uh, the community on mission, uh, both then and now in the local church, is to be built with all sorts of people. Can be built with all sorts of people. People from different backgrounds, different callings, different giftings. And added together, that makes the community on mission, the diverse community on mission, powerful. It makes it effective. It makes it uh, enriching. For all who are part of it. Let me show you what I mean here down in Ezra 2. Uh, it starts off this great list of people. It's about 70 or so verses in Ezra chapter 2. Uh, it begins by mentioning the, the leaders, the leadership of the entire group um, returning back to, to Jerusalem. And we see civic leaders. Uh, we see religious leaders. So leadership. Secondly, then we see from the second half of verse 2 right through to verse 35, it lists... The men, it says, the men of the people of Israel. And it, and it gives precise and exact numbers of people uh, numbered by their clans. Uh, and so we have to remember that when, when, when it says men of, men of, men of, and various numbers and names and all that, it's referring to families. Great you know, groups of families would have returned back to the Wild West from Babylon to Jerusalem. I mean, how brave... Well, they can you can you imagine as a family being called to uh, such a place uh, with with such uncertainty and nothing but hope and faith in your heart for what God is going to do? Well, that's exactly what we see, and there's hundreds and hundreds of families that answered the call. That's that's amazing. They left the comfort of Babylon back to the obscurity of their homeland. So, families in verses 36 to 42, then we see priests. And Levites being mentioned. These are, these are people who were called and, and chosen by God to, to lead the people in worship to God. Uh, to perform worship to God in, in some circumstances. To facilitate and prepare and, and uh, administer worship to God. That was what their role was. All about worship. I love verse 41. Uh, it gives a shout out to uh, verse 41. The singers, the sons of Asaph. Music was so important to the worshipping community. And it says there that um, 128 sons of Asaph, the, the singers, uh, accompanied the, the returning community. <clears throat> so we had them. And then verses 43 to 56, the temple servants uh, were, were listed. The grafters, you know, the labourers. Those people who turned up and said, you know what, just give me a job. I'll put my hand to anything. I don't care if it's even sweeping the floor or collecting up the bricks. I'll do it. The servants of the temple. This community of people uh, was composed of those from high rank and low society. We had priests and bricklayers, uh, education, ed educated scholars and woodworkers who had learned their trade in the family business. We, we had singers and servants, powerful families, and those who came from a very obscure and humble background. Can you see this diversity that's already listed uh, within the returning community on mission? But it's important. There's one other thing I need to point out. As you read through the list, it becomes clear, uh, the more you look into it, that there is quite a lot of non-Hebrew names in the list. Why is that important? Well, it's important because the returning community, the community on mission, included those who were outsiders at one point, were foreigners. They, they were not of the ethnic people of Israel, but, but, but at some point in the past, they had been received into that community. They had been grafted in from outside. They became part of the covenant people, God's chosen people, the community on mission. And as such, they too, along with everyone else, were stirred by that same stirring of the Holy Spirit. They all shared together this vision of the restored temple for worship. They all wanted to labour and pull in the same direction to, to build a name for God and his glory once again. You know, the New Testament shares a very uh, exciting vision, the same vision, a greater vision for diversity within the local church. 
it too has a great picture of how it should be, uh, of, of racial or ethnic diversity within the local church. In Ephesians chapter 2, Paul highlights when, when he's writing to the non-Jewish Gentile uh, believers in the city of Ephesus, he says to them, Look, remember, um, at one point, God's special relationship was reserved just for the children of Israel, for the Jews. But now, because of Jesus, the door has blown wide open for you, you outsiders, you foreigners, you strangers, to come in to know God, to access him and to receive his blessings, just like the old covenant people of Israel. Let me read to you here from uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, Paul says, Paul writes in his letter, he says, Jesus has broken down in his flesh, that is in his body, on the cross, the dividing wall of hostility. Then it goes on to say, therefore, through him, that is Jesus, through faith in Jesus, we both have access to the ones in the one spirit to the father. Therefore, he says, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens. You are saints. You are members of the household of God. This great vision that we see begun in Ezra chapter 2 is carried on and magnified through the gospel of Jesus into the New Testament. And Paul is saying this must be demonstrated and received and, and uh, magnified in the local churches, this side of the good news of Jesus Christ. Because of the power of the gospel, there's going to be peace between you and God and forgiveness and restoration. Wonderful. Thank God. But Paul goes on to show there will therefore be peace between you and me because of the good news and the power of the gospel. Between you and me, between my family and your family, my tribe and your tribe, my country and your country. There will be peace. That's how it should be in the local church. And folks, how, how badly needed is that message today when, when we look at all the... the uh, the trials and the, the challenges that are happening just now on the subject of racism and these, uh, you know, uh, problems that we're seeing, these great reactions. How important, how badly needed uh, is this message of reconciliation through the gospel of Jesus as fleshed out and lived out by the church? That's why we say here at Foundation Church Belfast, by the way, that we are gospel centred because we recognize and, and receive and rest on the power of Jesus to overcome the evil of racism in all its forms. Jesus has broken down the dividing wall of hostility. Let's not put it up again. The New Testament shows that we should uh, see uh, racial and ethnic diversity within the church, but also a diversity of roles and giftings and and, and abilities within the local church, the, the community on mission. Paul, again, the Apostle Paul, uh, writes that uh, we all have the same Lord, we all have the same Holy Spirit, and yet uh, the Holy Spirit gives different manifestations of his gifts and of his power through the church. And it's going to be different depending on who you are and what God has chosen to do with you. Uh, he, he says this in, in, in Romans chapter 12, among other areas. Uh, you know, we're, we are many members, but we don't have the same function. Uh, we have different gifts according to the grace given us. Uh, for some of us, we have the gift of prophecy. If we have, then use that in proportion with our faith. If the gift of serving, then in our service, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts, that is, encourages in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. He's saying and showing that there's going to be different manifestations of that same spirit, great diversity of gifting and calling and role within the local church. And we need you. We need all of you, says Paul, with your pioneering spirit to use these gifts to serve and to build up the community on mission, because that makes much of Jesus Christ. Two applications to this uh, teaching of the diversity of the community on mission. Number one, knowing that the community on mission is diverse means that we needn't compare ourselves with one another because we're diverse. That means that God has wired us up differently. He has given each person different gifts, 
different natural abilities, different temperaments, different ways of thinking. So therefore, we don't need to compare ourselves and we shouldn't try to compare ourselves one with another within the church. Um, that means that we can't look at other people in pride and think to ourselves, well, I'm more gifted than this person or that person. And we can't we can't be proud like that. But it also means that we can't look at others with dejection and think, oh, my goodness, I'm no way near as gifted or, or powerful or influential as that person. Because we know that there is diversity within the community or mission. That's God's spirit working in us. You might say, well, that's them. That's how God has wired them up. That's how he has gifted them. Praise God for the gifting and the strength of that gifting in this person over here. Praise God. But he has wired me up and gifted me differently. He may have even given me the same gift, but not just the same level or strength of that gift. And that's down to him. That's them. You, you be you. Let them be them. And let's together serve one another as we glorify Jesus. That's what we're all about. First of all, we don't need to compare ourselves when we know that the community of mission is diverse. Listen to God, by the way. Ask him, show me, Lord, how am I gifted? How, am I, how are you preparing me? How, how do you want me to serve you? And listen to his voice, listen to his calling and do what he says. Don't be worrying about what's going on around you, what other people are doing. Thank God for that. Receive that blessing, but... That's not you. Only you can do what you're called to do. So knowing that we're a diverse community means, number one, that we don't need to compare. Secondly, it means um, it, knowing that we're a diverse community means that we can ask God for a new gift or for a deepening or a fuller expression of the gift that he has already given us. Jesus says in Luke, verse 11, uh, Luke 11, your father is a good father. And he knows, this is God the Father, he knows how to give you, O child of God, good gifts. He knows that. And you earthly fathers, you know how to give good gifts to your children. And comparatively, you're evil you know, to, in God's scheme of things. How much more does your heavenly Father, who is good and great, know how to give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask? God will give you the Holy Spirit, if you ask. Gifts, by the way, and it's important to know, gifts are not necessarily permanent, nor are they fixed. Uh, you may be given a gift for a certain season of ministry, and then God uh, may choose to give you another gift or a fresh gift or, or reignite an, a gift of your earlier years to, to serve him in a different way in your later years. He may give you a fuller expression or a deeper, and more intense application of a gift that you have already received and i'm really looking forward to uh teaching through these things in more detail when we do gather together uh, for public uh, gatherings and worship and we teach through the holy spirit and spiritual gifts as a church but ask god to give you a a new gift or a, f a confirmation or a fuller um, expression of what he has already given you there's great diversity within the community on mission